Hey folks, Jonathan here, uh, back in the upholstery room here, or shop, or whatever you want to call it, but figured I would show a few things uh, that I figured out along the way, and again, I'm not a upholsterer, so uh, I'm just going to show you the way I'm doing it, it may not be right, but we're going to show you the way, okay, we got to do some cording for our seat we're getting ready to do, so this is what I actually bought, which is hundred feet of clothesline and this is seven thirty seconds and the reason I'm using this okay uh, this is not much different than the 550 cord but it seems to be a little harder and I don't want anything really soft because it won't stay in my cording foot good and the original stuff I was using which was made for cording wasn't staying in it and I'd get off a little bit so I think this stuff will do better it's a good size and saves a lot of money hundred feet of this is about four dollars uh, the cording stuff that's made for cording, you get 30 feet of it for uh, uh, around six bucks or something like that, five dollars and something. So this is way cheaper. So this is what we're going to use. We got plenty of it, and I'm going to show you how I've come up, you know, with uh, doing this to make it easy on myself and uh, the way I'm going to sew it together because we're going to do this whole cording around this top of the seat in one piece. So, all right, show you as I go. Okay, so here's what we got. We've got three strips I cut out we're going to put these in the end and for the cording and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it but these are about two and a half inches wide uh, I've sprayed this one uh, with spray glue I'm using this Loctite it's about half the price of the uh, the 3M uh, I like the 3M and it holds better but for this job I really don't need it to hold great because we're just putting it on there long enough to, to get it sewn in so there's no use you know expending or using the more expensive stuff but what I'm going to do is, got spray glue on, we'll lay the cording on it, and I'm going to fold it. And I'll show you that. Okay, so now I'm at the end of it. And what I'm going to do... We're going to spray glue this piece, and then we're going to put it inside of this one. Now if you wonder how your hands get dirty doing upholstery work, this is how, right here. This darn spray glue sticks to you, and then every piece of dirt or anything else will too. And that's what we're going to do and that's how we're going to sew it and that's the best way I know to make a transition to be able to not see it really bad I'm still using my old motor I don't have my new one on yet okay so you get a lock to stitch and of course on this one it's a little you can't reverse it so I bring it down and then I bring the needle up lift up on the presser foot and bring it back and then go right back in where I was and lock it in that way and this is not a walking foot machine, it is a walking needle machine. You'll see the foot stays stationary, the needle actually moves. Okay, we got the back of the seat ready. Got that material on it. And uh, it's a weird shape, of course. This is the top of it and it's the bottom of it. So now we've got the seat cover cut out and ready, as you can see. And we are going to try to sew the piping on it and then we'll check the fitment again. Alright, All right, we're moving right along like the Muppets and the Stubaker. 
Okay, we got the uh, piping sewed on, sewn on, and uh, we're getting ready to do our measurements for here. Now it gets narrower up here at the top, so this will actually hopefully come in. And basically, what I'm getting at is this piece here is going to get narrower at the top than it does down the sides and around the rest. So hopefully, I can do that right, and then uh, I'm going to start my seam from here to make sure that we get it perfect on the ends and that's what I didn't do last time uh, you definitely want to start center out somebody had mentioned that too but I knew that but I didn't do a very good job on the other one and uh, these sewing these corners around even even sewing the uh, piping on it's uh, pretty tough to do and then one of my seams ended up right here in the corner which is a bad spot and the other seam ended up down here well, that's the end. And let me see. There should be... No, well, maybe there's not another one. Yeah, there is another one right here. Can't really see it too well, and you won't hardly be able to see it at all once I get everything done. But, uh, coming out pretty good. Uh, there won't be any gaps in the seams anyway. Hopefully we can get this one stuffed good enough with the uh, foam and get it wrapped good enough and all that good good stuff that it's going to look decent so uh, like I said this is a pretty complicated one with it being around like that but you know it don't matter it is what it is so we're going to see if we can get this done and get it in there tonight all right all right folks we've uh, got the uh, back seat done completely and uh, I think that the first one was too loose I think I've, I've stretched this one a little bit too tight uh, or I had to stretch it a little tighter than what I probably should have. So I'm getting a happy medium. Uh, you know, like I said, it's all learning experience. So uh, we've got it in. It's done. So now we're working on the uh, the bottom. We're going to try to get it finished up today. And it uh, depends on, like I said, how many record calls I get or how many times I've got to go out. But uh, but so far, so good. I'm, I'm a lot happier with this than I was with the other one. Uh, slowly figuring it out. Now... My, my big deal is to get this, you know, and the other one lined up. So I'm going to do the best I can do. Can't guarantee perfect, but, you know, it is what it is. So we'll see how this works out. All right. And here's where we stand on the back, or the back bottom. I've got it uh, together and got the pleats in. Got the whatever you want to call it, where the burlap would have normally went on the springs. Now we did, we treated these springs with uh, we've got the can somewhere, but it's actually a Loctite uh, rust uh, uh, what him whatever it was. It reverses the rust. It's like 414 or 415, whatever it is. So uh, anyway, we're gonna keep on this one. Uh, I got to do some more piping and go ahead and get this one uh, ready to uh, cut out the right shape. So the piping on and then. Uh, We'll figure out the sides, and like I said, way too far gone to get any kind of a pattern, so we're just uh, winging it here. All right, okay, so now what we got is our cover upside down below it. We've marked center, we're going to do the same thing on the back, try to get this centered as good as we can, and hope that this comes out decent. And then uh, we'll go around it and mark where we want to mark it, and then cut it out and then put our uh, piping on. All right, we're moving along. We've actually got the uh, piping sewn in uh, all the way around, and we're getting ready to get some foam, get on this thing so we can get our measurements for the front and the sides. You know, they taper really, really big, and uh, hopefully this thing will turn out all right. So I may go with some two inch foam. I did an inch and a half on the back rest, uh, of this and it done pretty good now I've still got to add in my half inch foam under here what I do is I cut more half inch the size of this and then I spray glue it in the bottom side and because we've got half sewn in here that way it, it actually sits right and if you're wondering you know when I start doing this uh, upholstery work my hands are clean but this spray glue is terrible and I'm bad about you know I get right into my work so you know it's not like I try real hard not to spray myself but 
anyway, thing I know I'm not in charge of spraying tear gas, right? All right. Okay, folks, I've got the bottom in, the back end. Uh, I want to show you some of my mistakes, so maybe you won't make them if you do this. And uh, like I said, I'm learning as I go, so you know it's not a big deal. If uh, it's, it's not about what you do the first time, it's whether you improve the second time or not. And that's what we're trying to do is improve. Now I've got a terrible lineup down here, but I pushed that back seat up and bolted it in as high as I could. And as you can see, there's a gap there, so I can lower that down some and and probably take care of that. And this is where I seem to come together. There's a little white spot there. We'll, we'll probably take a marker there and brown sharpie there and just darken it up so you can't see it so well. And uh, I mean, it turned out pretty good. I don't have my alignments perfect. I mean, this uh, is pretty much centered. Uh, lines are fair until you get out this way. And for some reason, these lines are wider. I don't quite know why unless I just, you know, messed up marking them. And same way over here, this one's a little bit wider on the bottom, but, you know, I can live with it. Uh, don't much matter to me, and as long as my wife can live with it, we're good. So we're trying to figure out carpet. I've got black, and I've got a light and tan color. I think the tan would look better. I really do. My wife's dead set on blacks, but I'm going to, Lay the, I just got this black laying down and then I'm going to take some of the uh, brown and lay in here and just see what the difference is. And the brown's a lot lighter than this, so it may look stupid, but you know, men ain't as good on that stuff. Uh, this one I did the same thing. I, I probably got it a little tighter than what I should have, but you know, we worked it out. It's really comfortable to sit in and that was my one of my goals. So anyway, we're learning and uh, Getting better as we go, and, and I hope if you do it, you will too. And uh, so far, I'm liking it, and it's not it's not a hard job. It's not as bad as I ever you know expected it to be. Uh, you know, like I said, just don't be scared to jump into anything. It don't matter. Uh, I mean, all you can do is make yourself look like a fool, and I'm I'm good at that. So anyway, let's get at it. Okay, we're working on the seat back now. Just got it stripped down. Got to clean it up. Uh, seems like. Everything's a challenge and everything's a new puzzle to figure out every time you uh, go from one thing to the next. This is going to be totally different, of course, because it's got a back on it. So I guess I've got to build this and then uh, turn it in or, you know, sew it together inside out and then turn it over and hope it fits on and all that good stuff. Uh, I know this gets burlap on the front and the back. And then, of course, we get foam. The foam's supposed to wrap around and tuck in. And uh, I could feel the bars, you know, it was hard around here, but it was soft sort of on the side. So I think we can figure it out. Uh, shouldn't be too bad. And uh, we'll just have to uh, play it by ear and do it as a go. The uh, only good part is, is the next one I do, which is this is pasture side, will be the, you know, at least I'd already have a, a little bit of experience. So, uh, so we're, we're moving along. Uh, I think I'm going to do my inserts on these tops first and then I'm going to set it back up and then that'll give me a measurement exactly where I need you know to line them up at the bottom so I think that'll be easier you know you're limited because of the center here you're limited on where you can put your your insert at uh, you know it'd be a lot easier if I was just covering this solid but you know I'm doing it the way I want to do it so. a little bit more about the sewing machine if you can see it uh, this is a 11W102. Uh, the 11W series of, of singers is very popular. The 102 is not very popular. And this is a very early one of all of them. You know, you see it with like 153s and stuff like that, some military versions. And uh, this is just uh, the only thing they really got listed for this is for heavy duty work. That's really all it says. It don't say anything. In particular, you know, they had a lot of specialty machines that was made for uh, particular stuff, but this one's just for heavy-duty work. And this particular machine, I think, is a 1936. They started in 1934 with this model. So this is, you know, like I said, 36 model. And uh, part of the reason that I, I enjoy doing this is the fact that I'm using a vintage machine. 
I don't think I'd enjoy it as much. Uh, I'm not saying I wouldn't be doing it, but I wouldn't be enjoyed as much if I was using a new model machine. I just, uh, you know, I like antique machinery and tools and, and you know, my machine shop, old lathes, stuff like that. So the fact that this is a, you know, a, a vintage machine makes it, you know, makes it different to me anyway. And, uh, and just so you'll know, this is a walking needle, not a walking foot. The foot just goes straight up and down, raises up and down, but it does not walk like a regular walking foot machine. And so far, I have absolutely no issues with the machine. I really like it. I don't have any problems. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, have said you need to get a walking foot machine or something like that. But I don't, you know, I don't have any issues with this one. And uh, you know, I, I've kept it all. Uh, I actually went on the and found a Singer manual that actually showed all the oil spots so I wouldn't miss any. And uh, I thought it was kind of neat. That's actually a 3030 shell that somebody has stuck down in there. And the crazy thing is, is uh, if you go down through the top side and look, it's actually a fully loaded 3030 bullet. Don't know how it got in there or why, but that's where it's at. So. Anyway. Uh, good machine you know I'd, I'd suggest buying an old one if, if you know if especially if you don't mind working on a machine or cleaning one up and playing with it some and and you know figuring out if there's any issues but uh, you know the the table on this I'm sure is a lot later table uh, but you know the machines are I think from what I'm seeing is pretty much universal to where they fit different tables so, uh, different brand tables so. Anyway, and I do have my uh, other motor in, servo motor. I have not hooked it up yet. Uh, I will eventually. I just, you know, playing with this one, and, and I've actually gotten pretty used to it. Uh, I think I could do maybe a little better job with the other motor, but, you know, I don't know that if, if I knew what I knew now, you know, the way I'm operating now, I may not have bought the other one, but I still think it would be a big improvement. I think it would be like putting... Uh, fuel injection on a flathead six cylinder. Okay folks, I got all four of the inserts uh, done and sewn up. Two for the backrest and two for the bottom for the front. So we will, let me see, I got the piping to do yet and then we'll start working on the main stuff. Uh, hopefully the next video will be the last on this, this interior, but we'll see how it goes. Okay folks, uh, I think I'm through for the day. I did get the uh, carpet here in the rear cut and fit uh, it's still got to come back a ways and then we're going to sew up a piece for the center hump and then there will be two separate pieces on the outsides but it will actually go together under the seat but uh, there's no real good way of doing this this hump but uh, this is not in permanent this I've got a I'm waiting on that uh, insulation to go under it. so I've just got it in here temporarily and I, I want to go ahead and get it in here and lay it out so it'll flatten out and uh, maybe it'll go in good. I've already got it dirty. Anyway, so it don't match real good with the interior color, but I've had, like I said, I had this and that light tan, and light tan really didn't look that good in here. Here's where we're at, and hopefully front seat, door panels on the next one, and uh, we'll be finished with this thing. I've still got the little kick panels to do in the front, but they're not, they're not hard to do. Do them quick, so... Anyway, I appreciate everybody watching, and uh, and you know, hopefully, this will get somebody to go out and buy them an old sewing machine and get to work. All right, appreciate everybody watching. Till next time, bye.